We can't call this a war. It is not a war between two states. It's a massacre. It's a turkey shoot from a, an occupier against an occupied population. <laughs> President Obama, the French prime minister, the French president, the British prime minister, the Canadian up in the north all speak of Israel's right to defend itself. If they're saying this, they're basically saying that the slave master has the right to punish the slave. It's not different than a slave master that has been in total control of the slave, controlling their daily life, controlling their food, controlling their airspace, controlling their water, and yet they're dissatisfied because the slave has the temerity to say no, to say I want to be free, I have a dignity that I want to be free. And therefore, we need to understand what is taking place. This calamity is not of today. This has been 67 years in the making. So when the United States and the Western powers speak of Israel's right to defend themselves, they're speaking about a child that they brought to life in Palestine. It was the British who took the land from one people, promised to the other without consulting the Palestinians. Yet it was inherited by the United States. Whoa. And we need to be very clear about it. They're speaking double and triple speak from all sides of their mouth. Whoa. If they want the Palestinians to stop resisting, then stop occupying them to begin with. The New York Times, when it covered the murder of the four kids on Gaza Beach playing soccer, the first headline spoke about four kids killed on the beach. Few hours later, that headline was completely changed and the lead up to the article was completely changed from witnesses saying that Israel killed the children to a complete obfuscation of what takes place. And then they wanted to engage in liberal humanization of the Palestinians where they began to describe of the kids and what took place. But then they say that their mothers told them not to go outside and play, leaving in the mind of the reader that they should have listened to their mother, not the fact that the military killed four kids playing soccer on the beach. That's, that's what the media makes it possible. NBC had to yank their reporter from the scene, Ayman Muhyiddin, because he also reported the story as a primary witness being on the beach. CNN took their reporter out of Gaza and sent her all the way to Russia to cover something because she documented the settlers in Sidrut celebrating, celebrating the slaughter that is taking place in the Gaza. And therefore, media, as Chomsky have said, their role is to manufacture our consent. But I say the following, the murder of the Palestinians is done by the Israelis, but the media kills the Palestinians once again in our consciousness by erasing them constantly. And therefore, we need to be doubly aware and constantly engaged not to allow the media to kill us one more time. Not to erase us from the pages of the newspaper. Not to mix up a Palestinian family by saying it's an Israeli family by Sawyer. That's what is needed. But it goes deep. 
deeper than this. Because Western countries see Israel as their created child. They are ready to defend it to the health. And therefore, we need to begin to discuss our role in this country. The F-16 that is bombing the Palestinians, we paid for it. The Apache chopper that is hitting the Palestinians, we paid for it. We pay for every atrocity that Israel is undertaking, and we need to stop what is taking place by ending and stopping our aid to Israel. We need to stop our aid to Israel. Now some, and I've been hearing some of these statements time and time again, where some ignorant person that have not read history poses the question, of where is the Palestinian Gandhi? Where is the Palestinian Gandhi? That is an ignorant statement. They don't understand the difference between colonialism and settler colonialism. Settler colonialism wants to commit genocide. And even, even if we think about where is the Palestinian Gandhi, I tell you where he is. He was slaughtered in Sabra and Shatila. He was killed in Deir Yassin. He was bombed to smithereens this past, past week. His name might be Muhammad Bakir. His name might be Muhammad Durra. And if there is a Palestinian Gandhi, either he's killed or assassinated, he's rotting in jail or been deported for a long period of time. And further, if you're asking about Palestinian Gandhi, where is Israel Gandhi to meet him halfway? The Gandhi that you send us, the Gandhi you send us comes to us on the top of a tank, flying an F-16, and his name is Bibi Netanyahu, or Lieberman, or Wiseman, or Herzl, all committed to the indigenous people genocide. So don't come out in an ignorant statement asking the victim to come out and present you with a Gandhi. You need to ask the aggressor to stop killing the Palestinians and let them... with the Palestinians. Yeah. Lastly, right. lastly, there are many of us in here today, but we need to translate our strength into harassment of the political leadership, yeah. the cowardice leadership yeah. in this country and across the world. Yeah. I would say the following, our political leadership was born without a spine. We need to give them genetic mutation and constitute a Palestinian spine for them. That's what we need to do. We need to harass them. Call in. Next two weeks, they will be coming to their offices to sit on their couches and sleep. You need to sit in their offices. Have a sit, have a sit in. Have a civil disobedience. Let them drag you down. You are the one that representing justice. They're representing atrocities. You are representing the highest ideals and moral and ethical standing. They're representing bombs and destruction. They're representing the bankers. They're representing the corporation. And it's about time for them to represent all of us. Power for us, power to the people.